students welcome to my channel so today in this video lecture we are going to study about anticholinergic drugs we have already done the introduction of ans and cholinergic drugs right so it would be better for you to if you understand it in sequence if you are new to the channel then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and you can also join me on instagram and facebook where uh, we are going on right now with the radiographic interpretation series which is going quite fantastically and it is helping a lot of students so you can join me over there and to get a free pdf of this video lecture you can get it from telegram so now any further ado let's get started so first let's revise it what we studied in our cholinergic lectures okay the story which we had followed was that acetylcholine is our hero okay and the cholinergic drugs or parasympathomimetic drugs they are the duplicate of our hero so they will just mimic the actions of uh, acetylcholine okay so today what we are going to study anticholinergics so they are quite opposite to our cholinergic drugs actions of cholinergic drugs and the anticholinergic drugs are exactly opposite okay so how cholinergics or another word for anticholinergic is parasympatholytic so how this anticholinergic drugs will work okay so see what we have studied in our cholinergic lecture that first acetylcholine is formed how when choline combines with acetyl coa right and then it is stored in vesicle until it receives an impulse so we have a drug called hemicholinium okay which is anticholinergic drug it inhibits the choline uptake okay so that acetylcholine nahi ban pae then other drug is vasamacol it inhibits the vesicular uptake okay it acts over here it inhibits the vesicular uptake of acetylcholine and the drug which is acting is vasamicol the third drug is botulinum toxin it inhibits the acetylcholine release okay so these three drugs works by this three different mechanisms okay and uh, somehow they just inhibit the uh, release of acetylcholine okay they don't want that acetylcholine comes into our uh presynaptic or postsynaptic sites okay so basically uh, actions of parasympatholytic are of anti acetylcholine okay now cholinergic blockers it is also the uh, another name for anti cholinergics okay anti cholinergics also called as cholinergic blockers so they are of two types anti muscarinic drugs and anti nicotinic drugs because we had two types of receptors na muscarinic and nicotinic on the nicot anti nicotinic drugs which are acting on the nicotinic receptors okay one which acts on nn receptors or n1 receptors are neuromuscular blockers and the another which acts on nm receptors okay neuromuscular receptors are uh, are called ganglionic blockers okay so in this particular video lecture we are going to focus on anti muscarinic drugs okay which inhibits the muscarinic actions of acetylcholine or cholinergic drugs so drugs which are affecting the muscarinic activity okay aaj hum yahi padhenge drugs which are affecting the muscarinic activity so ek to ho gayi hamari cholinergic drugs okay which are parasympathomimetics and another are anti cholinergic drugs or parasympatholytics okay so it is categorized into three based on its mechanism okay so drugs acting by other mechanisms we have already seen hemicholinium which decreases the choline uptake vasamicol which decreases the vesicular uptake of acetylcholine and botulinum toxin okay the mechanism by which botulinum toxin works is your important mcq so guys pay attention here how botulinum toxin works it decreases the release of acetylcholine by inhibiting calcium mediated exocytosis okay 
Do remember this calcium mediated exocytosis. And the another group of drug are the receptor selective antagonist. Okay. So M1 blockers. Guys, M1 receptor kahan pe hota hai? I have given you a very simple mnemonic. Theek hai? Pehle khao, fir dil lagao, baaki kaam baad mein. So pehle khao means M1 is present in GIT. Okay. Fir dil lagao, which means M2 is present on heart. And baaki kaam baad mein, which means M3, M4 and M5 are present uh, in rest of the body. Okay. So... M1 blockers which will mainly act on GIT they are parenzepine and telenzepine okay so you can easily make out ki iska use hum kaha kar sakte hai in peptic ulcer diseases right M2 blockers which will act on our heart like tripetramine and M3 blockers okay which will act on our uh, bladder so the drug is darifenacin. Do remember it. Darifenacin. It is used for overactive bladder. Okay. And then we have non-selective antagonist, which means that atropine and hyoscine are under this category, which are non-selective antagonist. Okay. Hyoscine is also known as scopolamine. Okay. Scopolamine is another name for hyoscine. So there's atropine and hyoscine. They are non-selective antagonist, which means they can act on any receptors, okay, any muscarinic receptors from M1 to M5, okay. They are having some significant effects on some particular muscarinic receptors and few less effects on other receptors that we will study in detail. So our main focus of drugs would be atropine and hyoscine from this anticholinergic drugs okay apart from that paranzepine and telenzepine i have already told you they are used in peptic ulcer diseases okay darifenacin is m3 blocker it is used for overactive bladder and do remember this three drugs and their different mechanisms now let's see the activities okay this was our hero cholinergic okay so anticholinergic action is exactly opposite it okay cholinergic will constrict the pupil so anticholinergic will dilate it which is mitriasis then it will cause hyperthermia okay how it will cause hyperthermia because of decreasing the sweating okay sweating decrease karke they will increase the temperature then heart rate ka kya hoga tachycardia uh, Anticholinergics will cause dry skin and dry secretions. Basically, all the secretions will be decreased. Okay, then urinary retention and constipation are the actions of anticholinergics. Now, non-selective antagonist. Okay, scopolamine. In the 1920s, Dr. Robert House promoted the drug scopolamine as a truth serum. Guys, ये बहुत बार MCQ में आ चुका है कि which drug is known as truth serum. So it is scopolamine or hyoscine. Okay. So scopolamine is a CNS depressant. It induces twilight sleep and it is used as a lie detector or a truth serum. Transdermal patch of it is used for prevention of motion sickness. Cycloplegic action, which means paralysis of ciliary muscles of the eye, okay, which result in loss of accommodation. So, in cycloplegic action, and it has more potent mitriatic action, which means it will dilate our pupil so that we can, uh, so that ophthalmologists can examine the retina. So, in such condition, they give this scopolamine drops, okay, for its mitriatic action and cycloplegic actions. Now, the second drug was atropine. Guys, everything about atropine is most important okay so don't uh, skip any single point remember it nicely and note it down okay atropine is a cns stimulant it has cycloplegic and madriatic action very long duration of action in eye whereas it has shorter action in other organs Atropine causes bradycardia initially, okay? Initially, it will decrease the heart rate, but as we will increase the dose of atropine, it will cause tachycardia. 
and it is useful in arrhythmias like AV block, okay, atrioventricular block and digitalis induced bradycardia. It is used along with neostigmine for the treatment of myasthenia gravis and cobra bite. Why? Guys, neostigmine is cholinergic and atropine is anticholinergic. So why we use atropine and neostigmine together? Because when we use neostigmine for myasthenia gravis or cobra bite, there are uh, increased effect of uh, neostigmine on our cholinergic receptors. Okay, so those increased effects unko compensate karne ke liye we have to give atropine okay then atropine is a drug of choice for organophosphate and carbamate poisoning which we have seen in quite a depth in our previous lecture of cholinergics right and atropine is contraindicated in children due to the high risk of hyperthermia which is due to decreased sweating okay so this is the dose dependent effect of atropine okay when we give 0.5 milligram it uh, slightly there is a cardiac slowing okay bradycardic effect and some dryness of the mouth and inhibition of sweating okay as we will increase the dose uh, it will cause tachycardia and uh, marked dryness of the mouth dilatation of the pupil which is mydriatic action okay and some blurring of neovision as well and when it exceeds more than 10 milligram it will cause hallucinations delirium and coma why because atropine is cns stimulant don't forget it okay because of its cns stimulant effect at higher doses it causes such symptoms now mushroom poisoning guys we don't have uh, many mushrooms in india or in any part of the india okay so such problem is less over here but it is quite a common in our uh, in western countries okay so see what happens in mushroom poisoning is uh, it causes the violent stomach cramps abdominal pain nausea vomiting and diarrhea okay and in the early mushroom poisoning, drug of choices are atropine and in the late mushroom poisoning, theotic acid is the drug of choice. Okay. So, in uh, certain areas where such mushroom and its species are found, then government uh, has to post such warning signs. Okay. And they also show that how these mushrooms look. They are known as, see, death cap mushroom. Okay. Now, adverse effect of anticholinergics, okay? Anticholinergic drugs ke adverse effect kya hai? The mnemonic for which is sludge, okay? Do remember it, sludge, which is salivation, lacrimation, urinary incontinence, diarrhea, gastrointestinal cramps and emasis, okay? And dumbbells, I have given you this mnemonic in previous lecture, okay, which, which shows the side effect of cholinergics, dumbbells, okay, A diarrhea, urination, meiosis, bronchospasm, emasis, lacrimation and salivation. Now guys, adverse effect of cholinergics and anticholinergics have certain similarities as you can see, okay, like salivation, lacrimation. Emasis and diarrhea, it is common in both with cholinergics as well as anticholinergics, okay? But anticholinergic singularity hai, urinary incontinence and gastrointestinal cramps, okay? And it also causes the dryness of the mouth. And whereas in the cholinergics, it causes meiosis, okay? Which is constriction of the pupil and bronchospasm and bronchorrhea, okay? which means increased secretions in the bronchus as well. So these two uh, symptoms were both of these differentiates. So do keep in mind and read it nicely. Keep this concept of hero and villain and hero and duplicate in mind. It will help you to solve MCQs, okay? So guys, this was all about anticholinergics. We'll meet in the next lecture of sympathomimetics drugs. So stay tuned.